Good evening. The Toronto Raptors lose 96-88, making it 11 straight games. I am uh, coming through on my promise to wear this ugly, shitty Brooklyn Nets hat as an homage and a thank you because I was thinking about this today. If you want this year's pick, if you're a tank person, I know people are going to unsubscribe because it's not being loyal. Toronto's all about loyalty. Got to be loyal in Toronto. It's what the city is built on. But it actually means you're an optimist because it means that you don't think the Raptors will be this bad again. And, I mean, we got 11 games in a row here. Really poetic by uh, Dennis in this game. Um, this is the second time playing against the uh, the Raptors since since he left. And, of course, uh, you know, an hour, maybe 30 minutes before the game, we are donned with incredible. We got our own Shohei Otani. You know, the Raptors didn't get Shohei, but, of course, they uh, they got a guy named Jonte Porter, who I went back and I found that he, he was a crypto guy a few years ago, went on some podcasts, talked about how he turned this amount of money into that amount of money, buying all these different coins with sunglasses emojis. And when you've got a guy, like making money with crypto is one thing, but if you're adding sunglasses emojis to your posts about how much you've made, you are deep in the game and um, send me your tips because I want it, I want in. If you're putting, uh, yeah, sunglasses, dollar signs, happy faces, just send, send me whatever hyperlink you want. I will click on it, I will put in money. Uh, let's go. But yeah, he. Uh, we'll talk about the <laughs> the Jonte Porter situation uh, after. And what did you guys think? What what player prop bets would Jonte have taken on uh, on this game? Of course, if you live under a rock, uh, the two things that he's being mostly investigated for were taking the under uh, on a game where he hurt his eye. And uh, I put a little thing of like a picture of the guy. It's actually the thumbnail from the game when it happened of uh one of the raptors trainers like pulling on his eye so i was like maybe he's trying to make it more red make it a little bit more believable and then the other game which was on uh against okc which i went back and watched uh his little bit and he left 10 42 into the second quarter only played three minutes uh left for an illness i remember thinking at the time you know uh the, his parents uh were kind of these alternate or are these alter alternative health people which is strange because they live in missouri which has always been a strict like i've always wondered what would lead an alternative health person to missouri instead of like a vermont or a wyoming or an arizona something a little bit more typical but they're in missouri and so i just thought the illness that he had um was related maybe to something like that maybe not taking a medication not not doing this not doing that but uh uh, it's looking, you know, as per Woj, looking like quite, uh, quite an, uh, a situation. And apparently, multiple sports books have uh, have come out or are being looked at for strange activity uh, Wait, in them. And like my Twitter timeline is uh, just like people who, mostly people who. Um, make money um, well, by promoting sports betting or work for like a parent company um, that supports it or promotes it. I've been approached by a bunch of them or three of them, I should say, and I've uh, turned them down. But uh, yeah, more importantly, I guess the Raptors inch their way closer to a pick, you know, um, what'd you guys think of the game? I know a lot of people were probably more, <laughs> more focused. I mean, the, it is just like a, it's a very interesting kind of unique situation because it's, it's more the, um, like of the Pete Rose variety and not so much the, um, the Shohei one, like it's been looked at um 
as if he's like betting on himself. So someone in the chat here, Rinks Curve, super don't care about what bets Jonte made. They freaking bombard the sports viewer with gambling ads. I don't even bet who can blame the lowest paid players for doing so. Do you think he used the jersey money that he got from Bruce Brown as the seed money, potentially? I was thinking about that. Um, but then, of course, there was all the the podcast i have i have family listening to me in the other room that's why i'm a little bit shaky you know, I, I can hear their forks going and, and, and all that stuff so um it's just it's to me it's like distracting and uh, i'm a big self-sabotage person which is why i'm talking about it right now at the moment um but anyways some notes some notes I, I think I had, anyways, made it clear. But anyway, so some notes from this. The timing couldn't have been worse. Uh, Jalen Wilson doppelganger. I think I've told that story before where this guy uh, scammed me pretty badly in 2019. And he looks exactly like Jalen Wilson, who was a teammate of Grady's. He's on the, the Nets now. Uh, he was a teammate of Grady's back on the, the Kansas team. But yeah, he was he was in this game. Uh, Noah Clowney, just a, just a great name. Kind of has a football. You guys hear that fork in the back? Got some loud eaters in the next room. Very loud eaters. Uh, so we had Dennis Dennis starting in this game. He this was his dream always was to be a starting point guard on a team fighting for the playing spot. Uh, I still I still love that that whenever he's asked about like why did you why did you come into this season with the expectation of being a starting level player he talks about the Germany run it does kind of remind me of like if Latvia had gone on a big run and Davis Bertans was like yeah I'm a starting level player right now but uh, he was he was starting for the Nets and probably was like him and Claxton maybe their most and Watford randomly had a had like a big, <laughs> a big game uh, you know, that famous Raptor killer, Trenton Wofford. I always get him mixed up with um, Tremont Waters, just the names. But uh, first play is Kobe Simmons. Or if Kobe Simmons, you know, he gets the call, the 10-day call up. Uh, I thought he was really smooth for them. Like, he had a he had a play where, or a sequence of plays where he hit a three- he got a steal, and then he had a lefty floater, kind of like Kyrie-ish area, but then his shot was like a righty shot. So I was trying to work that out in my brain of was the float, like what I need to, I guess, watch more Kobe tape. Um, we had Alvin say, maybe my favorite Alvin line of all time. He said, peanut butter jelly crustacean. And I haven't, like, I've been thinking about the Jonte thing, but I've also really been thinking about peanut butter jelly crustacean. I've kind of compared him to MF Doom quite a few times. Alvin just pulls these these words out and these metaphors out or these images that are just so surreal, uh, kind of in like an accidental type of way. Um, speaking of accidents, Lonnie Walker, with definitely the ugliest brick of the night, just, just pulled up and... Um, it was it was rough. I always forget that he's the Nets again. I talked about this last time. The Nets are just like one of the more random builds in the NBA. Maybe the most random build in the NBA. Raptors are doing worse. Obviously, eleven game losing streak. Really going all in on this draft. But the Nets. I mean, Mikael Bridges is kind of like their guy of the future. He's really fallen off of a cliff. He's a big Miles Bridges guy too. So I don't know if I like trust him very much but he had, he had, he missed a bunch of shots tonight really inefficient he had maybe the worst behind the back play i've ever seen in my entire life like it it was there's certain guys like gary's one of these guys where like you when they go behind the back they lose they lose almost all their momentum and he had a play in the second quarter bridges where he was like going down the right went behind his back and it was just an immediate turnover one just uh really ugly and then funny enough uh, mo gay Pretty much right after that, he tried to do this like reverse layup. Like this, this was just an ugly, <laughs> this was a really ugly game of basketball. Um, neither team shooting well at all. Like the Raptors shot forty three percent from the field, the Nets shot forty five percent. Like neither team. I mean, Nets they go nine for thirty nine from three. Raptors go five for twenty seven. That's 23% and 18% for people like me who can't do math. It's just an, this was an ugly, ugly game. 
of basketball and there wasn't a single player that was like cooking or looking good like Dennis Sch- Dennis Sch- leads all scores with 19 like there wasn't anybody on this team on the nets like cause i know where the raptors are at i'm kind of looking at these other teams like what do you have what do you have for us here you're kind of fighting for a plan i guess but you're also starting uh, Jalen wilson who looks just like the guy who scammed me so i i just take him off of uh uh instinct oh we got a super chat here uh thank you ranked scrub number two would you advocate for kenneth lofton jr um since you gave me the since you gave me money speaking of jonte porter uh i haven't seen kenny lofton jr in a long time i i know he's just kind of that like um random like thick guy that I don't really know the book on him, but I think the Raptors could probably use a little bit more size because is he a good rebounder? Trash Clips. Uh, bring up, uh, by the way, Trash Clips, MVP of the chat. Um, please bring up, he's like my Alexa. Here he or she or whatever. Like, Please bring up um, rebounding stats for Kenneth Lofton Jr. because tonight... The Toronto Raptors once again continue this trend of just getting absolutely eaten alive on the glass. Uh, they get out rebounded tonight, fifty to thirty. I mean, almost. That's almost for people like myself who can't do math. Let me tell you, folks, that's almost double. Um, no, I guess kind. Of, yeah, twenty, thirty, fifty. That's almost. That's close enough for me. Um, let's go to the garbage dump. You know, fuck that. Fuck that ad you just saw. Please don't buy those products. Not affiliated with Raptor Moments. You're going to hear a dog in the background. Don't worry about the dog. It's just uh, footprints on a wooden floor. It, it's got a bit of an echo to it. But um, yeah, look up his look up his rebounding because the Toronto Raptors, again, I'm wearing the Nets hat because being pro tank is actually being bullish on the Raptors. It's actually being optimistic. If you want the pick to convey this year, like I do, it means that you don't think the Raptors will be this bad again, which I mean, these are special, like this will be studied. These are special circumstance circumstances here. 11 games in a row is nothing to scoff at. And it's, going to be really up to portland to to do something dominate and eight and muse on on twitter go look that guy up tell him to do something uh trash clips kenny lofton jr has grabbed 18 boards all season he averages 1.1 a game <laughs> there we there we go he would he averages one rebound a game he could he would be like one of the better rebounders on this raptors team um but i mean there was a couple there was a couple like good things that happened tonight i'll talk about in a sec um trash clips you don't have to give him money he reads the chat i don't what uh, where's my jonte porter moment i didn't take any money from the sports gambling companies that came to me and emailed me and said hey love your content i'm pretty sure that's copy and pasted hey love your content love what you're doing on this youtube channel would you want to partner with bet whatever the fuck.com and we'll give you an affiliate deal. We'll give you a sign-up deal. We'll give you all this stuff. And I said, look, fellas, I'm broke as shit, but I'm not going to um, sell your bullshit because the only way I make money off of this is through an affiliate deal where my subscribers would have to lose money for me to make money because they don't pay cash up front. And now you're telling me that I can't have my Jonte Porter $2 in the, in the chat. Um, TZ, am I late for Jonte talk? Yes. Yes, you are. But we will circle back. I've got an ESPN story we can read. There's more developments. Woj is dropping bombs about this. Uh, get out, he crooks is MSJ. I agree. Definitely need, definitely, definitely, definitely need some rebounds. Definitely, definitely. I need some new references. Raptors need some new rebounds. Uh, I'm a fun guy, says Dennis Loki hates the Raptors now. Yeah, this is a, this is a fun little, I think... Dennis has this with uh, a bunch of teams. I, I think he's had exits, and I know Boston is like a thing for him, and LA. I think he kind of gets up for those games. I think he's kind of one of those guys who will carry that 
with a um, little bit of a Goran Dragic uh, type of thing. Obviously not as, not really hated by the fan base, but that, that same kind of like snooty attitude, I, I do believe that he um, is a purveyor of that, which is like part of the reason why he's, that makes him more of a valuable player. He gets up for games. He gets into scraps. You know, I made like three or four Dennis videos, Dennis videos on this channel. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So I thought, I mean, in terms, we'll get to the, we'll get to more John, <laughs> more John Day stuff. Um, by the way, if you're a sports betting promoter, you can't make John Day Porter jokes. We got We got to have like some. There has to be some reward for not taking the gambling money, and it and it is the ability to make jokes. That's what. That's the prize we get. We don't get any money, but that's the prize we get. Uh, in terms of uh, Raptor players in this game, I actually really like what I saw from Simmons. He didn't. People are going to be like, "Oh, JFL, amazing!" And he played better. He had fifteen points, seven for twelve. But I I still think that. On this team, they need creation. They need juice, and I'm seeing zero assists from Simmons, which doesn't make any sense. I think they fucked up the stats, but yeah, I mean Freeman Liberty, he he has his moments where he's in Malachi mode, but I thought tonight he kind of, I mean, 0 for two from three. He kind of showed you what his profile is, which is a ton of pressure on the rim, slashing, and this kind of that's kind of his more upside so i guess you could be excited about that you know four four rebounds he got four of the raptors 30 rebounds so that's um so that's cool kelly continues to be kind of in this like weird place where he's like trying to play proper basketball like he gets he's been getting a lot of 9 10 11 assists like i i don't know what his assist averages are post all star break but he's got to be trash clips somebody looked that up what are kelly's assist numbers or since the scotty injury because yeah he's shouldering a ton of the assists raptors 23 assists tonight that's it not a ton of ball movement not a ton of shot making so kelly gets a nine of your <laughs> your 23 assists uh yeah not, the guards that they bring in don't seem to like love playmaking for some reason and that was always a thing but they're leading in assists so the system i guess corrects or over corrects for that or whatever uh, Grady, bit of a rough game, uh, misses five threes, three for 11 from the field. And I thought Dennis was just eating. I mean, it, it is an advantage Dennis has when you've played against all these guys, all these hours in practice, you kind of know, um, where to go and, and, and what to do. I thought Dennis might have a bit more of an explosive game. I mean, seven for 15, one for seven from three. He definitely tried to gun it. But um, I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting for Precious. I think Precious is going to be really the one that just delivers the the absolute like beat down knockout punch. And that's next game, I believe. So uh, big opportunity to extend this thing to 12 games. <laughs> and um, I'm feeling I'm feeling a big Precious Achua uh, statement statement game coming in. MSJ could have used Jonte tonight. Um, yeah, I mean, unironically, uh, you could have. I think just any. It's weird. This team is always lacking so many things at once. Like forever, they didn't have guards. They just had a bunch of six nine guys, and now they just don't seem to have a ton of rebounding. The def they they don't have like other than a Baji like who is standing out on defense in a lot of these games. I mean, this game defensively I thought was better than than past games. I thought the effort was there a little bit more. I mean, ninety six eighty eight it was a bit of a slog. But I I also just think Brooklyn is just such a such a bizarre team. Just like if you want to have like a mushroom trip, just open up any Brooklyn Nets box score and just look at the players that they have on the team don't even have to look at the stats and just try to make sense of like it is it it feels like they looked at the raptors like the brooklyn nets the way they're constructed right now feels like they looked at the raptors of 2020 2021 like vision 69 and said hell yeah let's do that four years later because that worked out so well 
So you've got like Finney Smith, you've got Bridges, you've got Cam Johnson, you've got Lonnie Walker, you've got, I mean, they had no Cam Thomas in this game or Cam Johnson, um, but just like a lot of six, nine, lanky, I mean, it, it's shocking that they don't have Royce O'Neal anymore. He was like, a, he was like the, the cherry on top. Um, ben Simmons, I guess, is out. So I guess they are kind of banged up. Oh yeah, if you, pretty easy to forget that their highest paid players. is is, uh, is Ben Simmons. But Rare Theo says, Aaron Baines, I haven't heard that name in a while. Aaron Baines might have cursed the center position in Toronto. Yeah, there's been... That has been the most cursed position, I think. In kind of in general, I guess. Adding to the the uh, the Jonte story. Um, trash clips. Kelly has assisted on 67 baskets since March 1st, which is around five per game. That's it. Thought it was more than that. I'm a fun guy. Are the Raptors the worst team in the league? I really think we may be pissed and smacked this. This iteration of the Raptors, I would say, is the worst team in the league. Like this, this specific collection of, <laughs> of players. No disrespect. Um, but yeah, if you, I mean, you've got no starters. I think if you put, like, if you put this lineup, if you've got Mo Gay playing 12 minutes, Garrett Temple, no disrespect, no respect to any of these people or their families, Garrett Temple playing 16 minutes, uh, Jordan Wara playing 20 minutes, Kobe, Kobe uh, Simmons, I almost said Simpson for some reason. Usually, I guess 17 isn't a crazy number for a 10 day, but it that, that is on the higher end of a of a guy kind of first look on a 10 day. So you're giving him, you're giving your brand new, freshly polished uh, McDaniel's DMP. You're giving your freshly polished 10 day guy 17 minutes in this game. So, I mean, J- Javon Freeman Liberty 29 minutes, Abaji 30 minutes. It's yeah, you, and the, there's proof of that. I mean, they've the Pistons, the Wizards. I mean, they. This tank will be studied. I I think this current lineup of players, um, because you just think of all the injuries. You got no Boucher. You've got no. Why am I starting with like I'm I'm starting with like the least obvious injuries? But you got no DJ Carton in this game. Like how how do you expect to do anything in this league without a guy named DJ Carton? Um, nameless, I think nameless. By the way, who said that the Vancouver Grizzlies only got five thousand people to their games when they were here, and that's why the team they lost the team. And then I went and found all the attendance numbers for every year that the Grizzlies were in Vancouver and in Memphis. Compared the two side by side, showed that there was no real tangible difference. And then you moved the goalpost even further, nameless. So you're on thin ice, buddy. But um, he says I think DTJ is on that Porter tip. Sure would explain those cold streaks. Um, well, I do have a Gary video coming out quite soon that uh, it's one of him and Halliburton and the two thing or the thing that really ma- well the two things that really uh, marry them together are the outfits and the NFT love. Both big, 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 big. Nobody bigger than Tyrese Halliburton into NFTs. I did a lot. I dug up a lot of stuff on his NFT podcast that he tried to start with Tony Hawk and Eva Longoria. They recorded six episodes. He was very passionate for the project. Uh, all have been stripped from media platforms, but I have found clips because I'm a loser and I have things to do. Also, I've been chewing on the David Johnson documentary again. That might be coming soon, as in this offseason. Uh, for people that don't know, I got in big trouble filming a David, jo- trying to film a David Johnson documentary. It's the reason I got my media credentials revoked and uh, no longer allowed to say that I'm on the team. I can't say we, I can't say our, and it all goes back to the stunts that I pulled at training camp in Victoria, BC, trying to make a documentary on my favorite NBA player, David Johnson. Um, Rare Theo. Okay, I like this. Okay, this is maybe the best. So this this could turn into a whole thing. Um, you have no idea how much. Okay, Rare Theo, content idea. Venturing into the Toronto Raptors Facebook group. Okay, this is one of the content ideas I've thought about the most. It would take organization and I think a bit of money, but I actually want to pay like the, I don't even know how to describe them. There's a special type of person who's like very confident in their ideas, but consistently has very bad ideas. There's, and there's a lot of them. 
in, in the Toronto Raptors subreddit. And from what I know from Facebook, I would imagine there's a lot of material there, but I would just love to moderate a show where you bring eight or 10 of them on, pay them a little bit of money and just feed them, just feed them stuff, scraps, meat, and just have them fighting each other and making like the worst um, dialogue you've ever heard on a sports show. I really like, I, I think about that quite a bit. It would take some organization. Um, I'm a fun guy. David Johnson of all people ruined you. No, no. David Johnson is the fucking guy. And if you don't get that making a David Johnson documentary is funny because he's so irrelevant, then what the fuck are you doing on this channel? Anyways, uh, da, 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 da. John Tay Porter. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is a, fascinating story because so I, I talked about it off the top um do you guys want do you guys want any more notes from this game by the way are there any last thoughts before i go into a jante thing from this game do you guys do you guys enjoy do you guys enjoy this game 18 percent from, from three um objectively the worst team in the nba this current iteration of the lineup i i would be confident in saying that i mean you could try to argue um maybe I don't know. I, I, I don't think you could really, but um, Gary leads all scores for the Raptors with 18. Just no nobody was, was really on. And even Gary, 7 for 17 from the field. So no one for the Raptors hit more than 7 shots tonight in a 48-minute game. So... Um, Actually, you know what? No one in this game made more than seven shots. I mean, it's technically this is technically an NBA game, but when you've got two teams playing for forty-eight minutes in today's in today's NBA, in today's NBA, and nobody has more than seven made shots, are you fucking for real? What a what a terrible. <laughs> What a terrible game. Uh, my last NBA game I've been to was t in 2008. Kevin Durant in Seattle when he was on the Sonics. Played against Stephon Marbury. It was like 86-85. And it was so it was much better than much better than this. This is like a this was an abominable. This was a shambolic game. I I mean Um just That's kind of it. Like I went went through the notes here. Lonnie Walker, horrible brick. Nets fourteen to two run. Um, so there was one actually. Uh, one one last thing before we talk about uh, Jonte, just the Kobe the Kobe thing. I mean, really grasping for content here, but yeah. So there was a there was a sequences of plays. Um, Kobe with the lefty floater, which I need to investigate. Righty shot and then a steal. Raptors going a seven zero run. Darko's like. I don't like this. Let's make some substitutions. <laughs> Bring in JFL um, for Kobe, and the Nets immediately go on a 10-0 run. But no one's going to remember that because at the end of the quarter, JFL has two really aggressive drives that everybody's going to repost on Twitter. And, oh, my God, look, at, he's got ups. Um, so Raptors start the third quarter on a 7-0 run, and it's, again... Kobe, Wara, Temple, Brown, Grady, I guess with Temple as the center. And again, if you want to know why the Raptors got out-rebounded 50-30, to 30, that's probably part of it. I thought uh, Grady and Wara had some nice chemistry in the third quarter, just kind of randomly, but all of that goes away with um, Wilson's wedgie, all part of a 14-2 to two run for the Nets against the, I guess you could call them the starters. Uh, there was a play... Uh, the game was kind of in reach. The Raptors were just down by a few possessions. And there was a play where Abaji didn't know that the shot clock didn't reset. So there was like three seconds left on the shot clock. And he was kind of just like John L. Davis on Florida uh, Atlantic the other day, just like chilling. And then there's like three seconds left on the shot clock. He passes it to Kelly. He has to chuck up a shot that doesn't go in with one second left on the clock. Just a fucking dumb play. Nets go on an 8-0 run. Dennis just like beating Grady. 
And then uh, we have a great Devlin moment at 58 seconds left in the game. The Raptors are down 94-81. That is a 13-point deficit. And Devlin says, it's going to be tough from here on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like the... I, and I think that's the most... That might be the most deflated we've ever seen. I, I've ever seen Matt Devlin. There was no... There's no cutting it to a third. The Raptors have cut it to a 30 point deficit. There was no here come the Toronto Raptors. At least I didn't believe there, there was any of that. There was just 58 seconds left in the game. Raptors have scored 81 points. They're down by 15. They're shooting like 18% from three. And Devlin just goes, it's going to be tough from here on. Uh, so when Devlin, when Devlin is. So, um, spewing venom like that. I mean, that's that's when you know things have really gone absolutely off the rails. Um, rare Theo. It's always the same people posting about the same players. When I go to Facebook Marketplace, I have a whole conspiracy theory about because Eric Flynn moderates one of them, and he moderates it with somebody who was very anti Fred. And so I think there was some possible collusion between Eric and certain Raptors content creators as Fred played the same position as Malachi. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of venom in those Facebook groups. I mean, I remember just looking at them um, off of like Reddit links and just being like, oh, wow, Eric's really like really rocking on this thing, man. Um, rank scrub. Every moment of the stealth tank has been acceptable. Who cares if you miss threes? I'm all for interior scoring anyways. Are you the guy who gave me money? Do I have to be nice to you? I think I, I think it was. I want to be a dick, but... Yeah, it was you who gave me money. Damn it. I don't even... I don't even know what that means. You sound like my high school basketball coach when I would shoot... 39% from three and get benched if I missed one because Brandon in the post who shot at a true shooting percentage of like 42 was, you know, a few inches taller than me. So he could miss. He could just miss. Miss, 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 miss. But he's tall. Those are high percentage looks. But if you miss a three, buddy, better get on the fucking bench. But you gave me money. So um, speaking of giving me money. I kind of tanked your uh, Kenny Lofton Jr. question. I thought he was a good rebounder, and we found out that he was very bad. But I'll try to make it up to you in other ways. Uh, Toronto Raptors. So this is via ESPN. This is via – so we got David Perdum, Perdum, uh, whoever that is. But uh, we got Brian Windhorst on this. We got Adrian Wojnarowski Adrian on this one. Uh, Toronto Raptors, this is by ESPN, just came out fresh off the press, although there have been a couple updates, which we will get into after this article. But Toronto, actually, you know what? Instead of this bullshit, let's actually, let's do something. We have the technology to do this. I think this could work. We're going to leave the trash dump for a sec, and we are going in to... Guys, when the Eagle's still there, I think the Eagle can stay there. But we're going into the article, folks. That's what this channel is all about. So lots of Raptors post game shows, but we have the technology to go in. Uh, well, fuck. Into the story. Don't look, watch that guy. Actually, we can't because I'm not in control of this. So just pretend that this guy who's talking is, is saying the story, I guess. Toronto Raptors forward Jonte Porter is under investigation by the NBA following multiple instances of betting irregularities, irregular, irregular, irregularities. Wow, I'm not sober. Over the past few mo several months, multiple sources told ESPN on Monday. Why don't they just say today? Today, okay. Uh, at issue are prop bets... I always have to, so I used to, I, uh, I, do I have to go on this? I used to own a blog that I actually sold for a decent chunk of change. That's my big tip for anybody who wants to make money in sports media. Start a blog and then sell it. Once you don't care about it, just sell it. But I would hire writers, and if they didn't get 85 out of 100 on Grammarly, I'd just be like, wouldn't even, 
wouldn't even do it. But anyways, we're going to read this. At issue are prop bets involving Porter from games on January 26th and March 20th. Multiple sources told ESPN, uh, an NBA spokesperson told ESPN that the league is quote unquote looking into it. In the game on January 26th against the Los Angeles Clippers, there was an increased betting interest on the under for Porter props. Um, side note, that just means I can't even come up with it. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, under less than which for the night were set at 5.5 points, 4.5 rebounds and 1.5 assists. There was also an over under for Porter's three pointers, which was 0.5 that night. Porter played just four minutes before leaving the game because of what the Raptors said. Stick to podcasting boys. Because of what the Raptors said was an aggravation of an eye injury he had suffered four days earlier in a game against the Memphis Grizzlies. Porter did not score against the Clippers, but three rebounds. Porter did not score against the Clippers, but three rebounds and one assist. And he did not. um, This is actually what this, this is. I'm reading this as it was typed. Porter did not score against the Clippers, but three rebounds and one assist, and he did not attempt a three, meaning the under hit on all of the props. And if you are confused by that, so am I. Basically, what I think he's trying, or what they're trying to say, again, stick to podcasting. The 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 written word is the last real form of art, and and you guys are just fucking shitting all over. What I think they're really trying to say here is he intentionally missed on, like he intentionally went under on 5.5 points, 4.5 rebounds, and 1.5 assists. And the easiest way to do that, the easiest way to not score five points, four rebounds, and get one assist is by only playing four minutes. That's a That's a great way to not hit those numbers which is what the bet was. And as you can see, this kind of opens the door to some pretty grave indications. And I would imagine this is like a bet, a band for life situation. I would just imagine that um, this is in terms of like gambling in the NBA, this is probably the worst thing you could do. I think like if, if this comes out as true, I, I mean, obviously, I mean, running like a, uh, like a, I don't know. Is I guess dog fighting would be worse. Don't ever do that. But uh, that night, Porter played just four minutes before leaving the game because of what the Raptors said was an aggravation of an eye injury he had suffered four days earlier. Did I already read this? Uh, the next day, as part of the daily report to users on betting results, DraftKings Sportsbook reported that the under on Porter's three pointers was the biggest money winner for betters of any NBA player prop from games that evening. Porter played 19 minutes two days later and scored 12 points with seven rebounds and three assists. So he's being smart with it. He's, he's, he's going, you know, like when you go to the gym and you take off days, so he's not, he's not loading it up on every game. Like that would be too risky. So we're going to play this kind of cool. We're going to have one game where we, where we leave, we play four minutes and then leave. And then the next game, we're going to drop 12, seven and three. Uh, just it just makes the whole thing a little bit more believable, a little bit less suspicious. You know, you gotta take your chances uh, smartly. You can't you can't just be no pun intended. You can't just be like shooting blanks constantly. Anyways, on March twentieth, in a game against the Sacramento Kings, Porter played just three minutes before leaving the game because of what the Raptors said was an illness. I remember that. And did not return. He did not score, attempted and missed one shot, and had two rebounds. Sportsbooks had his over-under set at 7.5 points and 5.5 rebounds. So I I guess it's also genius because when he plays the good games, like he gets, you know, 12 points, 7 rebounds, and 3 assists in 19 minutes. I'm just guessing this is how this all works. Is that's going to jack up the numbers for the next game, which was at 7.5 points and 5.5 rebounds. Because if you remember... From previously, it was 5.5 points and 4.5 rebounds. So two plus, so he's added two points and one rebound to his over-under. And again, what's a really easy way to not get 7.5 points and 5.5 rebounds? Leaving with an illness. That's a, that's a very uh, high percentage. You know, that Reese guy from ESPN, he put out a whole thing being like, this is my risk-free investment. This is an actual risk-free investment until 
you get um, banned for life, which is definitely on the table here. Anyways, the next day, DraftKings Sportsbook reported to its users that Porter's prop bets were the number one moneymaker for the night. Um, at least one other U.S. sportsbook detected unusual betting interest on the Porter props. The Porter props. That's got. That's like the the Mueller report. The Porter props. The Panama Papers. In the games in question, a sportsbook industry source. A sportsbook industry source. God, I hate, I just, can we just careen into a, a comment? Um, told ESPN that multiple betting accounts attempted to bet large amounts upward of 10,000 and 20,000 on Porter Unders in the January game against the Clippers. Betting limits on NBA player props vary by sportsbook and customers. Oh, they should have gone with uh, Ipe's guy. Ipe, 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 Ipe. Um, but are typically around 1,000 to 2,000. People were trying to do whatever they could to bet Jonte props against the Clippers, the source said. Who are the people? Can you release that? Or are you just going to be an unnamed fucking source? And then just a few days ago, the same thing. We had a bunch of people trying to bet under for more. Porter, the brother of Denver Nuggets star. Okay. Michael Porter Jr. is on a two-way contract with the Raptors, earning 450 k this season. He missed the Raptors game on Saturday against the Washington Wizards for personal reasons according to the team. So I guess he just has to, like, do you have to keep up relationships? I guess you probably have to keep up relationships with this stuff. So maybe he had to go hang out, get some uh, get some paperwork done, pay some people, maybe uh, break some legs. Uh, he's listed out for Monday's game against the Brooklyn Nets, also for personal reasons. So what do you guys, what do you guys think he's up to tonight? What is, uh, what is Jonte doing? Right now, did he watch the game? Uh, Three Design says, NBA needs to tone down on the bet ads. Well, they're about to add it into a league pass. So have fun with that. Ivan Tony got caught betting on himself in the Premier League, and he's back after six months. Um, I don't know who that is, but that's a cool name, Tony. Tony Bet. That's where the homestand sports person went. They went to Tony Bet. Which I actually found out, and yes, the dog is walking past for the seventh time. I don't understand. She has a whole other life, and sometimes she likes to walk back and forth on the wood floor. Anyways, uh, NBA players, back to ESPN. Back to ESPN here. So he met, so he's out against the Wizards for personal reasons. He's out against the Brooklyn Nets for personal reasons. NBA players alongside all league employees are prohibited from betting on any league events, including prop bets. Violations of the policy could, in, could include fines, suspensions, and possible terminations of contracts, among other actions. Sports betting, blah, blah, blah. Porter, blah, blah, blah. So the update was there was a second book. So Woj came out with another bomb saying a second sports book. I don't know if they're um, naming names on this stuff, but... A so this is per David per Perdom Perdum. At least one other U.S. sports book dedicated detected. Wow, unusual betting interest on Porter prop Porter props in games in question. So there's more than is ESPN doing investigative journalism now because they're the ones who also are hot on the Shohei thing. They got the interview from Ipe before anybody else did. So maybe maybe ESPN's turning a corner. Maybe the ESPN gambling money is being funded to make better content i mean that that's a pretty optimistic look at it um stevie gary payton to 100 bet on games this year too what team is he on gary payton too i sometimes go four six nine days without uh gary payton too is on the golden state warriors by the way they are one back to the trash back to the landfill um 11 games the and the Eagles for freedom because the Raptors now have freedom to just play the worst type of basketball you've ever seen in your life and it doesn't matter <laughs> that's that's ultimate freedom that's what like the people doing the freedom convoy stuff could only dream of having this latitude to just kind of do whatever you want um, but yeah, it's funny. I said like this tank will be, will be studied. Um, 
we never hear about trash clips. What, do we have any updates on the James Dolan thing? Remember how big of a story that was? And now I haven't heard anything from him. I mean, I know in the U.S. when you look, like look at the Trump situation, I know court cases take like 17 years to, to start. But isn't like what's happening with that? Is this this is obviously a much, much bigger situation. But I kind of joked that this tank will be studied. There have been a lot of like, like, I don't know what the quickly thing is. Um, you've got Jayla McDaniel. Like, just, just the fact that Jayla McDaniel, like, all you really need. You don't need any other or whatever. It's all, all of that is hearsay, conjecture, speculation. Um, like, there was even people speculating on the RJ thing, personal reasons, before that news came out. So you don't really want to speculate on that stuff. You have no idea what could be happening. Quickly could be dealing with some travesty. You don't even really need to look at that. All you need to remember and go back to the thing that actually happened was... It says we're dropping frames in the software. The only thing that matters is that uh, Jalen McDaniels took a technical free throw. That's it. That's the only, that alone, like when that happened, Adam, the, the NBA, I was expecting the NBA to come out with something similar to this, where it's like the NBA is launching an investigation into the Toronto Raptors for blatant tanking. And our only evidence is that Jalen McDaniels took a technical free throw. He also played in overtime in another game. So, um, yeah, maybe the Knicks, Azatam, is he, where did he go? What's he up to these days? Could he be in on this? Is this like, is there a sleeper cell thing happening here? Who, who actually brought in Jonte Porter? How deep does this go? Was that trainer actually making Jonte Porter's eye more red to make it look more believable in that game where he was photographed? But hey, the Raptors broke the single season assist record. That's what really matters. Whoa, where'd we go? What happened? Um, wow. The garbage. Let's go back to the bar. Um, what's the crowd like? What's the crowd like tonight? What do we... Maybe we can leave the... Maybe the eagle... Yeah, the eagle can go. Eagle can leave. We can go home. So we got more of a... More of a Hawaiian themed looks like younger crowd tonight. Definitely a younger crowd. Um, so that's a cool shirt. It's got like a David Cross kind of vibe going on. Like he might be. It's like a Vietnamese David Cross. So that 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 could be no no fuck that could have been a great character. Um. So yeah, we got we got kind of okay. We got a USA hat. These two guys with the white hats. They're up to no. They're definitely up to no good. These two guys here. The three of look at the three of us with our white hats. Definitely, definitely, definitely up to no good. Um, no live music tonight. Okay, we got a guy with a cowboy hat in the back. I'm assuming he's the live music. You 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 really do have to to stereotype in these situations to get um, a read on it. It's called. There's like there's a book about this. The the think the. Uh, Thinking fast, thinking slow, where you have like two brains, but some people only have one, or something like that. I don't know some self some self help bullshit. But yeah, we got the we got the three hats here, Hawaiian. What kind of? I think it's gonna be like a. It definitely looks like a country kind of vibe, but these guys are not really dressed for like a country a country setting. Um, I want David Cross to come back though, because that was a great shirt. I could kind of see his uh, energy. Is that not that's unless he took the shirt off? I don't think that's him. He because he dis disappeared back into. Oh, that might be him there actually. Um, and he, but I'm not. So I'm not seeing. I don't. I don't have a potential. I don't have a number one. I mean, this guy could be. This guy is looking a little main character ish. Is he maybe you know, I think it's probably he's like he's here with his daughter. He he's kind of looking around, being like, "When is the music going to start again?" So I have something to look at, because now I'm just looking into the distance. Kind of want David David Cross David Cross to come back. Again, these bar these bar breakdowns that I've been doing. Trust me, 
these are more entertaining than what the Raptors are putting. Oh, this guy, this guy has bad intentions. The hoodie with the black shirt. Yeah, I don't. Okay. This guy, watch out for this guy. He's looking for validation. He's, he's looking for an exchange. He's not here to provide, um, vibes or positive interactions. He's a taker and he's kind of, he's congregating. I don't like these three back here. Um, I've got a bad, I've got a bad feeling about these guys in the back. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not loving this crowd tonight. Um, I don't know how long we're going to stay in this bar, but they're, they're cooking up something. I think it's, it has like a frat feel to it. Like the other night when we first did this, there was just like the weirdest dynamic in the bar of like people in their seventies and then people in their twenties. And just a lot of like very awkward interactions between generations and sexes and cell phones being charged, pizzas being ordered three-way love triangles eva uh, forming and quickly evaporating and just a, a reminder of um why i don't leave the house a lot of patterns a lot of buttons a lot of patterns we've, we've had three very very different crowds here in the last little bit i kind of like this guy off to the side here he's just kind of bopping his head looking around but I, i'm not seeing any like serial killer type the David Cross guy was the only, I, I, he's been in the bathroom for a long time. He might come out um, pretty wired to go. I've got any, I've got any younger people in the chat who've never been to a bar before. Usually, if someone goes to the bathroom for a long time, if some, if you're, if it's your first time at a bar like a club and you're like hanging out with somebody, and they're like, I'm going to the bathroom, and they come back thirty two minutes later and they're shaking and trembling they probably unless they have you know a condition or it's probably whatever that guy david cross is doing right now yeah a lot of patterns but these these three this 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 crew forming on the side um Nameless says, Quickly's uncle passed away, unfortunately. See, exactly, yeah. It's like, you never know what's going to happen. So you can't really... Like, there were people being like, oh, that looks really suspect. I Like, I don't even think you need to um, look at that or... Um, it's just just the Jalen McDaniels free throw. That's all you that's all you really need. You add that to the Jonte Porter thing and you've got, you know, suspicion or whatever. The police term. Let's hang out with some of these people. Okay. What's she up to? She's she's pretty rambunctious. I don't usually like people who are really rambunctious. It's just it's a it's like a massive like if you're having fun, I'm I'm just I'm kinda kinda not uh I don't really know how to respond to that. So Yeah, it's a it's a it feels like a universe it feels like a college night. Remember those college nights when you were in college? And they would be like three dollar beer, and it would be a lot of like beer pong. Uh, I used to be a I used to be a blackout drinker, so a lot of uh, a lot of blackout drinking stories. If anybody wants to hear those, it's a short window, age like sixteen to twenty, but packed in a lot of experiences into that short window, but. Um, not really seeing a main character here. There's no live music happening. Let's go back to the dump. So we're going. Shit. We're back. We're back in the dump, folks. It's been eleven. It's been eleven games. Um. Let me bring the eagle back in here. It's not completely hopeless. That's the draft pick right there. But yeah, so uh, 11 games. Next game coming up, we have the uh, New York Knicks, the Knickerbockers, my favorite team as a kid growing up. Um, and I will continue to believe that Precious Achua will deliver the 12th, number 12. I 
is OG, I don't know if OG is playing. I know he's had a few injuries since joining the Knicks, but I know Precious has been playing better, and he doesn't. Precious doesn't seem like the type who would be like in all the open gym videos, where like when they went to Victoria, BC. And they're showing all like the beautiful landscapes and the, the 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 waterfront and just the great architecture and the nature and the beaches and Champagne was just like yeah I don't, I don't know I'm more of a city guy but whatever and then uh, Josh Jackson was like yeah I was really surprised that like Western Canada is nice like you, you had no idea I mean who like who would have thought and then Precious is just like vibing and walking around buying lemonade. Going up to the the First Nation statues and like vibing with that and talking about the artwork in it and just riffing with the lemonade person. So I don't know if he's like a big grudge guy, but it's just I don't know. It just it, there's a there's a poetic thing that I there's a Lynchian maybe thing that I strive I pray for in that. Um, it just feels right. It just feels like Precious is going to be the guy who comes in, destroys the Raptors, and s- looking back at some point in the draft when the Raptors just kind of get in there by like one. Because again, people, I've, t- I've said this like a million times, but Grange and whoever writes about this stuff never talks about this angle where people are like, oh, I want the pick, I don't want the pick. There's a third option where if you wait too long, it conveys into two seconds, which is the worst scenario by far. And you only get there by fucking waiting. That would be like the ultimate disaster. So again, yeah, you're optimistic if you want the pick. I mean, it's diff- you, you can't just create an 11 game lose. Like it's tough to have an 11 game losing streak Especially when you've got the Nets, or you've got, I guess the Nets, you got the Wizards and the Pistons in there as well. But that's why I think this is special. And I think it's only, you only get this level once in a while. If, if you're, unless you're like a, no, even the bottom feeding teams, like they're not doing this stuff well. This is actually like, you know, surgical or whatever. Vegan Grass asks a question that, did you get into my Twitter DMs? Because this is all I've been asking everybody. Vegan Grass, is there any footage of the Raptors media game? Um, so I did a podcast with uh, S. Barahini back, you can find it on the channel. We t- I talked about how I, like my personal belief not really into the, like gatekeeping per se, but I, I do believe that, so for like basketball, for example, I think if you're going to be a credentialed media person, you should have to be able to shoot 15% from three unguarded. Like, not a fluke. Like, you have to take a thousand three-pointers and get 150 of them in, and then you can be credentialed media. There should be, and that should be like televised as part of the gig. And to go like a step further, if I'm these media companies, I'm hiring somebody who shoots 32% on unguarded threes, who has three years of experience versus somebody that shoots 12% or 15% from three with six years of experience. Like, give me the people, give me the Josh Lewenbergs who that's the guy who I really heard absolutely eight in the media game. Of course, his favorite movie of all time is The Dark Knight. And he's just a... I mean, he's a fucking hooper, man. You you think about people who would potentially dominate that game. That was the first guy that came to mind that I, I've just been hearing uh, a lot of people behind the scenes talking about how he just feasted on, you know, guys like Will, guys like uh, uh, who else played in that game? Pat Delaney and Pat Delaney didn't play. I don't know. He 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 feasted, but. Yeah, I've I've been I've been trying to get um I've been trying to get my hands on footage. It doesn't really seem to be available. I don't know why a media game wouldn't be televised throughout the media. But again, TSN only has two of the top one hundred sports podcasts in Canada, so hey, maybe they don't really know what they're doing. Maybe they fired all the radio people who are on the radio 
thousands of radio hosts and you only have two of the top 100 podcasts in the country in the sports department, maybe you should be firing the people who said, hey, let's go on radio instead of the hosts who were forced into the wrong platform. <laughs> Vegan grass, Randy Urban highlights is all I'm looking for. Yeah, uh, enemy of the enemy of the sh enemy of the channel, my great nemesis. I love how my the the enemies of Raptor moments are like Blake Murphy and Randy Urban. That's just like the the funniest like enemy list to have. Um, there are others too, but we don't have to get into that. Those are the more public ones. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, put me in the media game. Get me in the media game. I will wear all yellow. I've got the, again, I've talked about this before. The original intention was to wear the goggles, but they get foggy. Like within three minutes of talking, they get foggy. So I, I need to get like actual basketball goggles, but I could get goggles. I could get like yellow kind of spandexy things and just let me play. Let me play in the media game televise it or stream it somewhere it's the media um i don't really even understand like they're just they're missing out on such an opportunity for content but then again these these people are geniuses at content look at tsn's youtube page they are uploading youtube shorts onto their main thing look at the sportsnet shorts sometimes they get 800 900 views on 900,000 subscribers maybe these maybe these people don't know what they're doing Steve Audio, Brad Fay is a hooper. Yes, he is. He played in 1986 at SATE, the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. They went 19-0 and 0 that year. I believe he averaged 12 points per game for SATE. Brad Fay. Uh, okay, Raptors record is 16 straight losses. So that's... Uh, trash clips. Here we go. Precious average is nine point one point. You have to do the point one, but I, I respect it. Can we can we edit? Yeah, maybe just for future. Um, can we? We don't. You don't need nine point one. Like, uh, okay. Precious average is nine point one points, nine point one boards, one point two assists in games against the Heat. If that's any indication, he gets up for games against his old teams. So ten and ten. I mean, that's not that crazy, but I think he's gonna. I think he's going to do it. What if we get rid of this? Back. What's happening here? Uh, is that the same pink dress from the other night? Mm, no. What would the odds of that be? This guy's playing with his... This guy's playing with his hair. This this could be... This could be a guy here at the bar with the phone. Oh, yeah. He's got... He's got a lot of what we're looking for. He's got the phone. He's pretending to order something. I like... Okay. I think this this could be... This could be the guy here. Where'd he go? Oh, no. No! Fuck. I think that could have been a guy. Is David Cross back? Mm, Vietnamese David Cross is still in the bathroom. I want to go back to Vietnam, man. This kind of reminds me of Vietnam. Just like a happy, kind of crowded place. Good a lot of energy. Kind of reminds me of being in Nam, back in Nam. I was getting my like um, immigration stuff, or not immigration stuff, passport visa stuff. I was in uh, District Three, coaching. Who's he calling? Who's he calling? Oh, I think that's the guy. I think that's the original. Anyways, I think this guy. This guy was really drunk, and he thought I was American. I think and. I think he wanted to kill me, which was understandable because he was of the age of um, when the war was happening. We got people coming in. Where are the white hats? Okay, the white hats, my white hat brothers, my brothers in white hats, they're outside right now. They're cooking up some kind of plan. I think they're with the, I think they're with the potential main character guy. I think he left with the hat people. Hmm. We do have some develop. So we do have some developing stories here. 
I don't know what's happened with the live music and it is getting a little bit seems like it's a bit quieter okay we got awkward guy over here with the glass with the glasses blue shirt he's he's pretty good um she's really the only one with a lot of energy right now um wow would she reject me if i want if i was like hey i have a basketball channel be like go outside and should be like you see that see that traffic out there that's moving go walk in front of it um looks like there's like 10 people outside they're probably waiting for the music to start back up again i would imagine um this guy likes her though this guy this guy this guy is this could be our guy here i think he's gonna make some kind of move he's kind of the lean, he's doing the you're in everybody's way by the way too when you when you do that um, it's not a good place. It's not a good, it's like when you go to the grocery store and I was at the gym today, there's a guy in crutches. Like you feel bad for him. Sure. He's in crutches, but he's standing in the doorway talking to people. And it's like, okay, I, it's, it's too bad you're in crutches, but can, can like, maybe this is why you're in crutches right now because you, you don't have the spatial awareness. Maybe you got hit by something because of that. I didn't say that to his face, but I definitely thought, okay, he's looking where she go? Okay, she's going outside, and he's like, "Fuck." It, they're they're kind of clearing out a little bit. I don't know if it's because of the music stopping, um, but I don't know if it's, what is what's the date today? It is a Monday, I guess. But now he's this guy's got to wait for her to come back. He nodded at her. Oh wow, he looks at her. Yeah. So he's got himself. So this is the ladies' washroom. I think that I th okay. So he's posted up pretty close to the ladies' washroom, possibly close enough to get a to get a smell. Um, and I think that's kind of why he's here. He's kind of the only one moving around, or like um, kind of bopping his head up and down. I don't. Looks like he's not here with. We can go in a little bit closer here. Is that not the right one? That's not the right one. Every every one of these I do, I lose like seven subscribers. It's really funny. I just hope they never come back. That's always my thing. Like I hope they never watch any other because I can't I can't deal with the like push pull relationships. So you're either you're you're in or just leave me alone. But um. If you're like, wow, this guy is bad at zooming in. That I understand. Damn it. He's, he's, I don't know. He's kind of under, he's underperforming a little bit. I think he's just kind of content to be. Oh, music starting up again. Looks like. Okay, he's the guitar. Okay, we got a guitar. We got an acoustic guitar. Okay, here we go. We got Under Armour hoodies coming back in. It's a great thing to wear at a bar. <laughs> um, that's cool. Gonna go, gonna go play lacrosse later, I guess. Uh, cool little. I like the beard too. It keeps it. Uh, you don't want any hair on your cheek. Only keep that. Uh, whatever the fuck you call it. Okay, this guy's got a neck tattoo as well, I think, or a necklace. Are the people? Are the people outside, are they going to come back in for the music that, you know, tends to happen at these, uh, these establishments? Um, a lot of our main characters have kind of, oh no, he's okay. He's still here, but his love, I think she, she's still gone. She's outside. I, I don't know if she can't see. She might've gone. She might be gone forever. She might never come back. Pink dress. She hypothetically broke two hearts tonight his and mine um but nobody's dancing is he gonna start is he gonna start drumming wonder how, what genre do you think it's gonna be so you got an acoustic guitar and a cowboy hat again you kind of have to go off stereotypes big beard shiny cowboy hat kind of leathery kind of looks like a leather vest got the biceps out 
it's probably like a it's kind of a weird instrument to have in a place like an electric acoustic guitar in a kind of oh people are gonna start dancing is the dance floor happening come out of the bathroom boys out of the <laughs> you seven guys in the bathroom together with white all over your nose time to come out again under armor hoodie find somebody to dance with you're wearing an Under Armour hoodie, nod to your buddy, you know, could have worn a shirt with, I like this guy, I like this guy here with the stash, he's got the collared shirt on, I like how he moves through the crowd here, um, this guy still has remained unmoved, unbothered, same as our blue shirt, just kind of watching the music, pink dress, or no, there's two pink dress or multiple pink dress, but flower dress is still gone. And this guy's vibing out. Just kind of nodding away. But our main, a lot of our main characters have, have left. We had the guys with the, the identical haircuts the other night. So I don't see them here. Under Armour hoodie is kind of interesting. He's got the like, how do you describe that haircut? It's kind of done in the shape of like a normal fade, but it only fades here. You know what I mean? And probably at the back. Bang situation. He's having fun. Oh, no, they're friends. This is like, um, this is key like frat behavior is when you're drinking you have to kind of act like you're upset with people, but you're only tricking them. And then you make it clear to them that you're joking and that everybody has fun. And that's what you do when you're young and drinking with people and you're in a fraternity or you're in a bar. <sighs> yeah, this guy's just bopping. All the people from the bathroom have, are back on and not a big crowd outside. So any final, uh, any kind of final things? <laughs> any, any final words for the, the chat? Uh, what are the odds on a precious quadruple double? I don't know. It's a good prop bet to take. Um, rare though Victoria BC mentioned of course lived there for a long a long time you know Dave, the potential uh, or the filming location of the David Johnson documentary as well so a lot of look forward to a lot of Victoria Sights and sounds. Um, Lafayette will urinate. Never tell anyone what you really do. Reminds me of the heat scene. Lady, why are you so concerned with what I do? My name is Neil. I sell rocks. Or rock salesman. Reading a book about rocks. In uh, Better Call Saul. I forget the scene, but... the. Uh, um, what's her name? Who plays Kim Wexler? Uh, I'm blanking on her name. Ray Seahorn. She directed an episode in season six of Better Call Saul, and there was a conversation, and one of the the inspiration behind it was the De Niro scene from Heat. Like, lady, what are you so concerned about what I do? What I'm reading? I sell rocks. My name's Neil. I'm a salesman. I'm reading a book about rocks. Lady, what are you so lady, what are you so concerned about what I do? I thought that I thought that love story was really awkward actually. Like I don't think I know some people are like, oh, there was a bit of a connection there. I guess there was as much of a connection as he was like humanly able to have, but it still was like really cringe, in my opinion. But I think it was like supposed to be cringe. But then even more cringe than that is the people who are actually like, oh, no, they were actually like, they actually really connected. 
and it's like, okay, have you ever like dated anybody before? Cause I, I don't think they had like actual great chemistry. I don't know why she didn't just book it. She was like the only really moral one too. It seems like, okay. Under back to under armor hoodie. He's kind of a, how drunk is he getting tonight? He's got that look. He looks like me a little bit. Um, blue shirt guy still sitting there. David Cross is nowhere to be seen. Yeah, the crowds the crowds are not uh, weird enough, you know. It's a lot of patterns, but that's about it. So. The Trotter Raptors lose. Jonte Porter's in trouble. Uh, it's 11 games in a row. Could be easily 12. Actually, you know what? Let's go through the... So the, the most they can lose is 21, I believe, is the... So let's, 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 let's just... This is really hacky, but okay. Remaining games. Oh, there's one on here. Okay, so the Raptors' remaining games. Let's see. How, so, how far is this? This is like if I was a TSN Sportsnet person. Okay, you need to do a segment. You know, middle manager at Sportsnet's like, hey, we love the Under Armour hoodie guy. We love the bar content, but you need to talk a little Raptors. We need we need a little bit more juice at um, Sportsnet. So, let's do a segment. How long can the losing streak go? So, we got eleven games right now. We have the, is it 11 or 12? I lost track. I think it's 11. It's in the thumbnail. Yeah, it's 11. Which is the longest losing streak in the league, by the way. It was at, at, at honestly, at seven games, the Raptors had the longest losing streak in the NBA. And, like, right now, looking around, uh, Pistons have lost seven. I mean, it's amateur, amateur shit. Trailblazers lost seven. They're also in a war with a pick, but um, Raptors remaining games. We got the New York Knicks, the Precious Achua revenge game. I mean, with this squad, I don't think they're. Be I think they're beating. There's only one game in this slate that I question. So Knicks. Then you got the Sixers, Nick Nurse, and Jeff Dow Jeff Doughton's going to drop thirty in that game. Um, you got the Lakers, even with a healthy lineup, uh, they lost to the Lakers and Tim Donahue or whatever his name is, Ben Taylor. Um, so the Lakers probably gonna get that. The Timberwolves, I mean, number one or for, the former number one seed. I mean, come on, the Bucks. They're not beating the Bucks. <laughs> uh, the, so this is the one here, April seventh. Mark this on your calendars. This is a uh, I mean, I'm still pretty confident based on what we've seen recently, but unfortunately, the Toronto Raptors do have another meeting with the Washington Wizards on Sunday, an early game, 12 or 6 Eastern, sorry, April 7th against the Washington Wizards. That's the one that I have circled. That, I'm, that you, I mean, we did just see them, what just happened uh, on March 23rd, but that's tough. Uh, Pacers, Pascal, you know, that's not happening. The Nets, I mean, we saw what happened tonight. I, that, that one's a bit iffy, but I'm confident with the Nets. And then double games against the Heat to close it off. I mean, it's looking pretty good here. It's looking like this could be a 21-game uh, type thing. So, Isaac Campbell, last, last thing here, says, the Wizards won three games in a row. <laughs> Someone posted Jordan Poole's stats in the NBA subreddit from the Raptor game, being like, yeah, Jordan Poole, yeah, he's back. He had 18 points or something. And I, I just said, against the 29th ranked offense, missing 80% of its starters, and he went 6 for 14. But still, you know, cooking the Raptors. Is blue shirt and glasses looking at Under Armour hoodie in a kind of a strange way? Other oh, guy's still in the same place. Yeah. Wow, that guy's a unit. Look at this guy. Holy shit. This guy on Clemson or something? My fuck. What a big boy. Salty crew. 
two guys here that are both pretty big, but he, yeah, he's, holy shit, man. She's like, how's the weather up there, buddy? Has anyone ever said that to a tall person? Can they just like spit on you? These guys are kind of matching-ish. Same, they have the buttons the same way. The shirts are very different. A lot of patterned shirts tonight. So the other night it was very yellow dress, pink dress, and navy blue t-shirts. The previous night it was more um, black and white and gray, kind of monochrome color. And now tonight is seeing more of a resurgence of pattern-based clothing, especially from this side of the establishment. But of course, you know, do have Under Armour hoodie as well to kind of keep things grounded a little bit. That guy really has his, that shirt buttoned up. This Ralph Lauren shirt here with the with the tight fade. Wow, that is a. Is that the, is that the top? Does he, have the, does he have the tippy top button up? No. Can't really tell. I don't like what these three are up to here with the white shirts. God, drunk drunk people are the worst. The worst. But. I think I like Under Armour hoodie here. Flower dress, still not back. Live music's, live music's still happening, but I think that's, I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty damn good. So I know, uh, you know, put, I know John Tay's a big uh, God guy, very into that stuff. So put him in your prayers. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know how to, I don't know what you would say, but that's just seems to be a thing people always say, like pray for the guy or whatever. So I know, I know he, he likes to tweet about like prayer and God. And, and, and so, you know, if you're into that stuff, give him a, give him a shout. You know, is that, I don't, is that how it works? You just like, you know, you get on your hands and knees and you're just like, and, it, and like, thank you for the bread and the day and all this stuff and a quick shout out to Jonte Porter. I think that's how you do it. That's how it works. Um, always been more of like a Buddhist, but not actually, you know what I mean? Like I couldn't actually tell you anything about it, but it just seems like a, like there's someone put a gun to my head and like, what religion are you? And if you have to pick one, it would probably be that one. Although I don't even think it's a religion. It's like a highly contested point. Shouts out to Thich Nhat Hanh. You know, shouts out to Pema Chodron. Shouts out to Gabra Mate. Shouts out to Song El Rinpoche. Shouts out to... That's it. It's only five people. The guy who wrote Siddhartha. The German guy. The German. The Dennis Schur. Yeah, Dennis Schroeder actually wrote Siddhartha. I don't know if you guys know that. I was actually at a river the first time I read that book. Like, didn't even know it. 